Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ and today we're talking Security Plus, the new exam, SY0-601. Spoiler alert, I pass the thing. Yeah, I take every Security Plus exam and I pass those too, but that's not, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about some comparisons, kind of my study methodology and why I thought that it was actually a better exam than the 501 exam, right? The first thing I wanted to point out was the increased focus on the 601 exam objectives towards attacks and vulnerabilities, right? So you might have already thought that there was actually a pretty large focus on the previous exam, the previous, the previous iteration, 501, on attacks, vulnerabilities, and threats, and I think that there was. And I think that the increased focus on those spaces, especially for cybersecurity professionals, is a really good thing. So I would actually uh, applaud the increase. Uh, I, I say that in my, in my prep material and things like this, prepping to take and pass the exam, I found more material associated with the attacks and vulnerability space. And I think that that was a really, a really good choice on their part. And I think that it was very representative of, of the exam as well. Um, so, so that's number one and that's pretty clear. And, you know, it definitely was similar, a, sim a similar vein and there was just, you know, more contents related to it. Um, I would also say that, you know, in light of the last two or three years, right, the types of cybersecurity vulnerabilities and the types of cybersecurity events that we have seen have been pretty pervasive, right? So I think that the, the new focus really should be in this space. When you see things like solar winds, the Garmin ransomware attack, major ransomware attacks costing on the order of millions of dollars in government, other municipalities, private business, and, you know, state and local municipalities as well. I think that, you know, it really, it really, emphasize the point that you know we should be aware of this stuff as security professionals even if you are like explicitly blue team the second piece is the change from you know technologies and tools to architecture and design i think that architecture and design was still a focus of the previous exam right where they were talking about you know firewall configs and network architecture and setup and then a little bit of like system administration setup and active directory and group policy objects and uh, read write permissions and things like this and i think that they've gotten away from that in terms of the architectural component and they've gotten more towards implementation, implementation as a cybersecurity professional, right? How we implement secure architectures, how we design firewalls and firewall configs, how we understand the interaction between the physical environments and cloud environments, right? And so there's been an increased focus, I think, in a number of these sections, but specifically in this section on cloud and cloud implementations. And I think that that's been great, right? And understanding even third-party cloud implementations like cloud access security brokers and other mechanisms for securely accessing cloud utilities. And maybe even, you know, understanding cloud APIs and platform as a, ser platform as a service and SaaS models, right? I also liked the new focus on implementation, right? As opposed to right there, a, a previous focus on technologies and tools and architecture and design and access management, right? Where they kind of, they kind of segmented out implementation in a few different places. Uh, I think that, you know, to aggregate it into one focus, which is implementation of security principles, right? Has been a really solid transition for them, right? Specifically, a new focus on Linux, firewall and cloud implementations and maybe a little bit of VPN, right? So I like that I like the renewed focus on Linux, basic Linux commands, understanding Linux server architectures, understanding um, Linux file manipulations and Linux password infrastructures and things like this. I think that that was actually a really good choice on their part as well. So um, I, a new focus on understanding, you know, your, your Linux terminals, which I think wasn't there before. And I know that they have like a Linux plus and this and that. And I'm not saying that there's some wild change where they're, you know, huge focus on Linux environments, but I just thought that it was refreshing to see a little bit more uh, Linux terminal and and a little bit more coverage of you know how these things work from you know a Linux environment right given that you know so many of our backend infrastructures are Linux based. Right? Finally, we have the last two sections right, and the last two sections have changed pretty significantly right where you know they they first had you know these risk management, identity and access management, and cryptographic concepts, and I think that they've taken and said okay well the cryptographic concepts should be kind of buried in a lot of this other stuff right. So instead of taking implementation and burying it in other places right, they've taken cryptographic concepts and said okay well we can we can implement we can talk about cryptographic concepts in architecture, we can talk about cryptographic concepts in implementation, and we can talk about cryptographic concepts in op operation, which I think that they have done, which is which is again I would say a good decision. You know they had several years to kind of hash this out, and they. Did did something that I thought was pretty productive. That being said, right, the, the, the newer sections with operation and incident response and governance are 
uh, good and bad. So this is where my mixed review comes in, right? I liked the new focus on operations and understanding like the fundamentals of cybersecurity operations with things like talking about security operation centers, right? SOCs, talking about your cyber incident response teams, digital forensics and, and incident response, defer, right? Having a better understanding of what these teams do and how they operate is definitely an important component that I think that they were lacking in the previous iteration of the exam. So uh, that was good. I would say, you know, an increased focus on governance, risk and compliance, in my opinion, right? If you're talking about entry level cybersecurity certs, I think that as security professionals, we need to understand risk. And we definitely need to prioritize, you know, our actions from a security standpoint with, you know, their risk and potential impact, uh, for sure. I think that, you know, governance and compliance in terms of you know, how you operate as a security professional is really pretty industry specific. And it's difficult to really capture in a small section of kind of a larger security bubble. I think that would be a little bit better reserved for something like, you know, a more specific certification exam infrastructure that's specific to industries like health and health compliance, PCI DSS, or financials with like Sarbanes-Oxley or something like that. But again, that's just my opinion. My suggestion in terms of, you know, how you take the exam and what you, where you decide to go, whether it's 501 or 601, in the short period of time where they are uh, overlapping in terms of their availability, I would say at this point, right, we're far enough ahead that 601, you know, the exam objections are pretty clear. There are a lot of people who have talked about their experience and, and, and like the process, I, I, including myself. So I think that the 601 exam is probably the way to go from here on out, obviously. Um, and, you know, once the 501 gets deprecated, there's really no option. But, you know, you, you always have the option until the 501 gets deprecated. So, you know, that's just my two cents. As is always the case, engineer, break stuff, and have fun.